This is a nearly new Kuhn Rakan pressure cooker. This is called the Razor model. It's a 2.5 liter model. And I've used it once. And uh, I, I'm one of those people that loves Kuhn Rakan products, but especially their pressure cookers. This particular uh, video is going to be where I'm going to give this a shot. No, that's not true. What I'm going to be doing is, is I'm going to be measuring the amount of water loss that is going to occur in this pressure cooker, this particular model, over a period of time. Now that will be important for some recipes where you want very little water contaminating the recipe. So I'm going to use a syringe. This is a 10cc syringe. I will put in precisely 60 cc's of water. That's two ounces. I will bring this up to pressure to 15 psi, which is the second ring, which is on this particular model. I will let it go for 10 minutes, let it drop in pressure naturally, that is, without trying to force the removal of pressure and then measure the amount of water that's left after that 10 minute interval. This is with 60 cc's of water in the pan. The waffle bottom that you see there is characteristic of this particular type of um, pressure cooker that Kuhn Rakan makes. It's meant for uh, braising things and then uh, the waffle bottom makes it easy to clean up. I can personally attest to that. I did some fried chicken in this uh, using the recipe that Kumra Khan has for this. And even though after this was all finished cooking, there was some residue on the bottom, with very little effort it came clean. So this is a very nice design. But this is the amount of water that's in it, and we'll see how much is left after this has come to a boil. and come up to pressure and stay there for 10 minutes. This is the valve that is an indicator for the internal pressure inside the pressure cooker for this particular model. You can see that it will come up like this. It does not have a rocking thing like you've seen on some pressure cookers. And there are some red rings on it and those red rings determine what the pressure is. This first ring is about 7 psi pounds per square inch. This is approximately 15. If it gets above that, it begins to release pressure all by itself, so it's a safety factor. There are many safety factors. You can tell that it's already coming up to pressure uh, as the heat is being applied. This will continue to rise as the internal pressure builds up, and we'll get to the second ring, and that will tell me that I'm at the 15 pounds per square inch and then I'll leave it there for 10 minutes. As you can see, it has now come up to the first mark and it is continuing to pressurize. This will continue to move upwards, as you can see here. It's almost at the second ring. Now you can see it has just hit the second ring, so I'm going to turn this way down so that it does not over pressurize. It takes very little heat to keep this at the 15 psi limit. Very little heat. And I have this burner down about as far as it will go. Trying to maintain a proper pressure with these particularly efficient pressure cookers is much more difficult with electric range tops because there's a significant lag time from the time that you change the temperature setting and there's a response. Some people will tell you in uh, using these that in those situations you actually remove the pressure cooker from the burner, set it aside, wait for the pressure to stabilize a little bit or come down a bit and then put it back on the burner after the burner's had a chance to, to cool off a bit after you've turned it down. But even with the setting on this burner, this gas burner, as low as I can get it, 
this is still higher than it should be for 15 psi. Now I have managed to get the pressure pretty much back down to the second ring. I may have to continually adjust this a little bit. I have about another eight minutes to go. This is coming up on nearly five minutes and about another 30 seconds. And I have been, again, trying to get the pressure to drop enough. It does a little bit, but this is a very fine adjustment. A plate is available from Kunra Khan that goes underneath the pressure cooker. It is designed to do a couple of things. One is to protect the seal that is around the rim of this um, top so that heat, especially from gas burners that tends to come along the side, uh, doesn't damage the, uh, the seal. But it also distributes the heat and tends to moderate it a little bit and, um, and that probably would be a good idea. I have one of those plates but I've actually never used it. This is now a little past about, almost coming up on seven minutes. And again, despite my best efforts to try to get this flame down, and it's as low as I can get it really, this is still a little higher than I would like. Keep in mind that this only has a little bit of water in it. There's nothing else that's being cooked, if you want to call it that. And so all the heat is being used to generate steam pressure and nothing else. In a real world environment where you have uh, material in here, uh, there's going to be some general radiating of the heat from the contents away from the pressure cooker. And as a result, um, there will be, in general, a, a little easier time maintaining this this ring setting, um, but it's not easy with only two ounces of water. This is now eight minutes and I've gotten the pressure pretty much down to where it's supposed to be. Now here you can see that the pressure has gone down a little too far, so I'm going to turn the heat back up a little bit and this is a constant battle with this small amount of uh, contents within the pressure cooker to get this exactly regulated at the second ring. Here I have added a little bit more heat and brought the, the pressure up a little bit. I've only got about 30 seconds to go and then I will turn the heat off and let this coast. Generally when there are uh, is something being cooked, it takes about 10 minutes or so for the pressure to gradually reduce on its own to where now the lid can be removed and this is completely flat like it was when it started out. Okay, this is now 10 minutes, so I will turn off the heat and we'll let this coast. One of the points that I should mention as this is cooling off is that 10 minutes of cooking time for this type of pressure cooker is quite a long time. If you put things in here like chicken legs or thighs or things like that, 10 minutes is enough to cook them at 15 PSI. Some things like um, chicken livers, about two to three minutes. So again, we're talking about a significant amount of actual cooking of the item that is in here for a uh, relatively small amount of water that we're using. Also, most foods that will be cooked in here will have some moisture of their own that will be released during the cooking process. As you can see, this is already going down somewhat. I'm, I'm not gonna push it down. If you push it down, steam will be released. That's called a quick release method, and that's fine. You can do that. 
for some recipes that actually is called for. But since what I want to do here is um, more or less imitate what would be a real world situation for the kind of cooking that I do, which is where I use natural release where it lets it cool by itself. Uh, routinely, that's what I use. This is what. So we'll see how much water is left after this has gotten down to its beginning point. This has been about four minutes, and as you can see, this is dropping fairly quickly. Again, keep in mind there started out only two ounces of water. That is a very small amount of contents for a 2.5 liter container. Um, so this should probably be dropped down very quickly from this point on. This is nearly almost entirely uh, out there it goes. So that's it. Now before I suck this um, residual water out using the syringe, I'm going to wait for this to cool down a little bit. I'm not sure if this is going to be in focus as I take this uh, top off, but I'm going to remove the lid here. And my arm is in the way. Take off whatever residual water is in here and set this aside. I'm going to go ahead and pour this residual water into this measuring cup so that I have at least something to hold this. Now remember we started off with two ounces of water, 60 cc's, that's one quarter cup. Now while I don't expect this measuring cup to be super accurate, I think it's pretty obvious that if one quarter cup is two ounces, we're awfully close to what we started with. But again, the, uh, the actual amount with the syringe will depend. So I will show what that looks like as we remove the water using the syringe. Okay, this is the syringe that I started with and I am removing the first 10 cc's and discarding it into the pan. This is the second set of 10 cc's. This is going to be the third set which will make us now 30 cc's. This will be the fourth set. And we get about 3 cc's off of that. So we started out with 60 cc's, we ended up with about 32, give or take a, maybe a cc stuck to the lid and part of the seal and some other stuff. So in 10 minutes of cooking at the second ring, which is 15 psi, we used a little more than about 25 cc's of water. Um, so that's not too bad.